Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So hopefully a quick video. And yes, I am wearing a shirt because it is hot outside and it doesn't get hot in the UK very often. So I'm making the most of it by wearing a shirt. Um, but yeah, two things that I wanted to cover from WWDC from iOS 16 and iPadOS 16. Um, one feature from each, which I've been trying out and I've been really, really liking, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing implemented properly later this year. So the first one is the new iOS 16 lock screen. And as you can see here, I have a new wallpaper, have some widgets and stuff going on. And of course, Android has had this for a long time now. I'm just glad that we can now have it on iPhone as well. I'm glad Apple have caught up <laughs> and started implementing a customizable lock screen because it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. I feel like the lock screen itself needed a lot of work. So yeah, I'm just glad to see it here. So if we look at the lock screen that I have here, you can see I have the time, the date, I have an activity monitor, the temperature and the battery of this iPhone. It does also show the battery of other devices you have connected at the time. And yeah, it unlocks very, very quickly. You can see a few things have changed, but the buttons at the bottom are still remaining the same. The torch button and the camera button. I wish these could be changed. I really do wish that you could change the torch and the camera button. Notifications now come from the bottom, but I have no notifications on this device. This is just like a, a testing device, you could say. This isn't my main phone. I don't usually use beta sort of software on my main devices because of course I'm working, I'm using them, I need them to be reliable. Um, but to be fair, with iOS 16 on this device, I haven't had too many issues. And when you actually unlock the phone, the animation is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I think it looks awesome. One of the best animations I've ever seen. Um, and it's just really nice to see it implemented in a wallpaper. I am wondering though, if they'll let developers maybe implement their own wallpapers and stuff. I, d I don't know. It would be nice to see uh, because I would love to make a custom wallpaper that animates like this when you swipe up. It's just wicked. When it comes to customizing it, you have to hold down on the lock screen and then you can have different lock screen setups. So this is very similar to the watch faces on Apple Watch, how you can have different watch faces. Very similar, but for lock screens. And yeah, you can set up different lock screens. I have one here, I have another one here. And then if you wanna add another one, you can just swipe right and add a new lock screen, choose a wallpaper. Um, but we'll stick with the one we've got right now. And as you can see, you can actually tie it to a focus. So you can tie it to sleep or do not disturb or other focus modes that you set up, which is really nice because you can have different lock screens for different focus modes. So let's just say you have a work focus and you want different widgets on the lock screen for your work focus mode. You can do that, which is pretty clever. When it comes to customizing it, you just hit the customize button at the bottom and then you can start changing things. So up here, you can have the weather and any other things that you want to add basically, which is pretty nice. Any other widgets, um, you can also change the time. Now the time ones, I'm not actually too sure about. I actually liked what we already have on iOS 15. I don't really like any of these. I think all of them are pretty ugly, to be honest. I'm just not personally a fan. Other people will love it. Other people will love the rounded text, this text, whatever it is, a serif font, another serif font, and this sort of outline-y thingamajiggy. Yeah, people will love it. I'm just not a big fan. I like to stick with the default. And you can also change the color, sort of. Um, you can make it sort of adapt to the background, or you can just make it a solid color as well. Um, I have it adapted to the background. And then with widgets, of course, you can add different widgets from different apps. Not many apps are supported right now, of course, because it is beta software, but it'll be nice to see when this actually launches, seeing what other apps end up supporting widgets for the lock screen. I currently have activity, weather and battery, but you can, of course, add other things. So let's look at some other widgets. So yeah, let's remove that one. Um, I mean, there really isn't much to be honest right now. Uh, we could add fitness maybe. Oh, okay, that's pretty neat. And yeah, that is the iOS 16 lock screen. I, like I said, I really like it. I'm looking forward to actually seeing it implemented later this year. Let's move on to the next one, which is Stage Manager on iPad OS 16. So this next one really did blow me away when I first tried it, mainly because it really sort of expands what the iPad is capable of. So it's Stage Manager on the new iPad OS 16. Now it is limited to only M1 powered iPads. There's been a lot of uproar about that. There's been a lot of unhappy iPad owners, which makes sense. I'm not really going to make any judgments because, you know, when it comes to the hardware and everything, I'm no expert, but Apple are saying it's because the older iPads, the ones without the M1 chips just aren't powerful enough and don't have enough RAM. 
but yeah, like uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of it in the comments and stuff. Um, let me know of your opinions, what you guys think about that. Because yeah, a lot of people are understandably quite upset. They want a stage manager on their iPad. They want to be able to utilize it. So yeah, they changed the way external display support also works with the new iPad OS 16. And as you can see, I have my M1 iPad Pro connected up to my 6K Pro Display XDR and it scales everything incredibly well. It's like I've connected my, my MacBook to my Pro Display XDR. That's what it looks like to me. It, it's, it's literally just like that. There are no black bars anymore either side and it actually acts as a separate screen. It's not just mirroring what's on the iPad. So if we actually try it out, you'll see what it's like. You'll see how Stage Manager actually works. But to enable Stage Manager, you have to go down to Control Center and there is an option for it in the Control Center to enable it and disable it. And once you have it enabled, you can go wild. So yeah, we can launch things like Twitter and maybe we bring it up to the main display. So we can go up here, we can bring it up to the Pro Display XDR like so. Actually, yeah, let's open up one I had earlier. So here we have the Apple website and we also have um, so yeah, as you can see, it's quite buggy already. What apps are these supposed to be? Twitter, is it? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, it's not, I feel like, perfect at all. It's still just really all over the place. Um, but yeah, you can remove apps like so. You have the three sort of icons at the top to remove apps. Um, and then you have Safari, like so. So I'm using the Magic Keyboard with the iPad to control everything. And yeah, the websites just look like I'm using a desktop computer. Like it's fantastic. Even Safari itself looks so similar to how Safari looks on my MacBook. So something I completely forgot to mention is that you do have a dock on the external display. So you have your normal dock that you have here and then you have that on the external display as well. So I assume it, you can't have two different docks. It's just mirroring the dock that you have on your iPad. Um, but yeah, you can drag and drop an app and it will open up right there which is pretty sick. And then you can start resizing it. So you can resize Safari to be much bigger and then you can resize Twitter to be much smaller like so. And yeah, it just works like a normal Twitter app. Like it's it's pretty amazing how well it works. I can see my Twitter feed whilst also browsing Safari and obviously I can make Safari a bit smaller if I need to. And it will automatically sort of shuffle the windows around. I can make Safari taller as well to make the most of the screen estate like so. Um, it even gets rid of the dock when I do that, um, which is pretty cool. And then let's open up another app. So we'll get Pinterest, drag and drop it into there. And as we can see, we have Pinterest here as well. And yeah, it's just, it works surprisingly well for even a beta software. Obviously, like I said, it is still quite buggy. It can sometimes just have a mind of its own, do its own thing. Um, but you can move the windows around and it sort of just organizes itself. And obviously each window works separately so you can scroll up and down in each of the windows, no problem. And you can even scroll up and down on the windows without actually opening up that window, which is awesome. So yeah, like you could have maybe a Word document, and then you can have your Safari browser and you can have something else all going on at once, maybe Spotify, all going on at once, but you it's connected to your iPad, which is just pretty damn awesome. I think that is pretty amazing. and really sort of ups the capability of the iPad. Now, one thing that's still limiting for me though, is that there aren't really any pro apps still. So for example, I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my videos. There still isn't Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Maybe Apple will bring it over at some point, but I don't really see that happening anytime soon, mainly because it's part of the sort of pro experience, the MacBooks and, and stuff like that. I kind of think to myself, if I could do everything on my iPad, then why buy a MacBook? And I feel like, will Apple really want to do that? Will they want you to just focus on one device? Who knows? I still like to see the iPad as its own sort of thing. I can see why people want to use it as sort of one machine that does everything, but, but I still see it as like the machine that's mainly for sort of media consumption and sort of more iPad-y sort of things. I don't know how to explain it to be honest. It's just one of those things where I prefer an iPad to be an iPad and a MacBook to be a MacBook. But like I said, I think for people who want both of those devices to mesh into one, I completely understand that too, because Microsoft have been doing it with the Surface, right? You basically have a tablet and a, and a laptop in one. So it'd be interesting to see what the future of this is. 
and where Apple take it because I think this is a good step in the right direction. This is exactly how I imagined the iPad should work and it scales so well on a 6K display. It's so smooth. It, it doesn't feel stuttery, it doesn't feel jittery, jittery or anything like that. It's a very smooth experience. But now I wanna try it with something else. So I have an LG Jewel up here, which is a portrait monitor, 2560 by 2880 resolution. So it's basically two 1440p displays stacked together and it is USB-C, so you can connect to my iPad. I haven't tested it. I don't know if it works. So I'm gonna try it and see what happens. Okay, so I've had to bring the mic into shot so you guys can actually hear me, okay? Because um, it is a million miles away otherwise and you won't be able to hear me properly. But yeah, we have the iPad, we have the display, we have the USB-C cable, plug it in. It does power, but does it work on the display? Oh, it's saying something. Oh, there we go. It actually works. It, it works. The colors are a bit off though. I feel like it's very saturated on the display. That's the only thing. But it does work. If we open up Safari, can we bring it over to here? Or if I open up Safari here? No? What if I, can I move it over? Let's click on this and see if we can move it over. Yes, it, um, it moves over, but it's still, it, yeah, it's bugged. <laughs> it's quite buggy. Um, yeah, it's still a little bit buggy, to be honest. Oh, there we go, it's just restarted. Um, so yeah, it's not the smoothest experience. It, it's still sort of all over the place. If we open Safari again, what if we, oh, there we go, we can adjust the height. Yeah, it just doesn't wanna really, what about Twitter? No, yeah, yeah as you can tell, it sort of works, but it sort of doesn't work. So <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not ideal, but I think with future updates, they should be able to fix this and have it working. Um, I'm still impressed that it works anyway on a display like this, which is a very weird, aspect ratio which is a very odd resolution but the iPad seems to figure it out some way or another because the text and stuff is completely fine the docking is completely fine um, it looks like it's just the actual window management and stuff that still needs a bit of refinement so yeah that's it for this video me covering the iOS 16 beta lock screen iPad OS 16 external display stage manager just seeing how it all works showing you how it all works because they're two of the things that I'm interested in most. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.